Hello, my name is Jacob Cooper. I'd like to take you on a journey with me that began several decades ago. It was September of 1993. I'd like to share with you a profound, incredible, mystical near-death experience that I had that I recall in complete, clear detail just the age of three years old. I went to the playground and I climbed a ladder onto a slide. And as I began climbing the ladder onto the slide, I began to notice that my breathing become a lot more difficult and even resuscitated when I reached the top of the slide. Bear in mind, looking back in it, I had something called whooping cough, otherwise generically known as pertussis, or the other way around. And as a result of this whooping cough, I suffocated. But at this time, my whole entire breath was going away to where I, I had nothing to hold on to. I began to just notice myself slowly suffocating to where there was nothing that I could do to stop the suffocation. And I was able to see my body in the disembodied state and was able to have an awareness of so many different parts of my body that if I had gone to medical school, I'm not sure I would know or see her as clearly as I did during this time. It's as if I had an x-ray scan over my entire physical body with priviness and awareness to all different functional components to it. But during this time, I was keenly aware of one part of my body, and that was my brain. I was aware that slowly, in addition to my body, my brain was being deprived of oxygen, and I could feel it caving in on me, as if you're in a room and the walls are caving in the room. In moments, I was able to feel my brain slowly shutting down, as if you have a plug in a wall and you pull out the plug, and my brain literally snapped in half, and I heard a large crack within my brain. And as the saying goes, my brain cracked open, and that's when God in the spirit realm came in. After this moment, my soul, or my being, I recognized was beyond my brain, beyond my body. There was a part of me that was continuing, with all life being taken from me during these moments. During this time, I began to race down a tunnel at some insane speed, a familiar tunnel that I've seen many times before. Not in this lifetime, but I know before this lifetime and many other times before this lifetime and other different lifetimes and incarnations. I became aware that I was about to leave my three-year-old self in this world and I still had attachment to myself. I still felt what would my life be like and how would my parents respond to me being leaving and how would this story look over some of the chapters that I was meant to write. But slowly I felt myself going at an infinite pace upwards and upwards to where there was no end to how good I could could feel or how high it could soar. The best way I could describe it was this endless sense of euphoria, where there was no time, there was no space, most importantly, there was no limitations to how good I could possibly feel during this time. And then these moments later, I began an awareness of what I would like to refer to as the palace of God. You could say source, whatever your terminology is used to. But to me, this palace was the highest point or the highest pinnacle of reality as I knew it. It was a centerpiece of reality that all things came from. And looking in this beautiful palace, I became aware of beautiful melodic octaves coming from this. And I was able to be aware of angels angels in this palace, and a beautiful light that I saw. It was almost too potent for me to look at, so I had to shield myself because it was so powerful. It was such an adjustment from the physical world into the spirit realm. Moments later, I became aware of a vibration, an energy, a feeling that to me spelt Christ's consciousness, to use the terminology that we're familiar today. But it's deeper than that. This was a whisper in a frequency on the other side that I was aware of. During this moment, it wasn't as if I saw Jesus Christ himself. It was even more potent. I was able to see the consciousness of Christ itself on the other side, and it was quite familiar and comforting. Going through all the trauma that I had through suffocating and the worries that I had of leaving my body behind and my life behind and the uncertainty and the questions of what my life would be like. In this moment, I was left with the feeling of all was well, will be well, and is well. And this is something that so many of us are not used to. We're used to pensing ourselves for Tuesday or Wednesday for something happening, or the bills being due in a couple of days. We're not used to being enough just as we are, in a place of endless peace and endless eternity, where there is no time. Past, present, future is all in the one moment. Moments later, I became aware of my body. I was pushed down the slide by my own spirit guides, which we are all assigned and contracted to before we come into this body. And as I was looking in the disembodied state of my body, I was able to feel a form of myself. I wasn't able to see myself, but I was able to feel my own form outside of my body. As I looked down at my body, I became aware of people calling my name. 
But I wasn't able to respond. I just laid there, lifeless and irresponsive. It's as if I felt like a caged animal that wanted to communicate, and I was able to see other people, but they weren't able to see me. It was quite frustrating that the suffocation not only occurred to my body, but it occurred to me on an inner level when I crossed over, being unseen and unheard, yet I could see them. And moments later, I was able to know their thoughts and know what they were about. I became aware of their story beyond the surface as I knew it, the story of their soul. I became aware of dancing, fire-like auras around, all the people around me. I was just amazed of how much is inside of us and all around us that we forget that indeed we are infinite spiritual beings at our core having this human experience. Moments later, in the distance, I became aware of what I call the spirit family or the soul family, which to me are all different actors and actresses in this play of life and were connected to throughout many incarnations and many lifetimes, each fulfilling our own karmic duties and scripts that we play in each lifetime. And I became aware of all of my soul family, which was the very core of my own soul and all the people that were watching me this whole time on record while I was living in this life as three-year-old Jacob. And as I saw my soul family members, I felt a feeling of embarrassment. And that was not their judgment. Their judgment was unconditional. It's as if I told my spirit team and my soul family that I was going on to this great mission, like I was a soldier going into war, that moments later I was discharged a couple weeks later. I felt it was just pr too premature for me to leave this body, that there was more work to be done. And so moments later, I became aware of an endless array or endless sea of angels, as I call it, that was floating right in front of me. And these angels were very youthful in their presentation. Contrary to the spirit guides, my spirit guides were very micro-focused. They were focused on me. Or these angels were just very much uniform in their presentation. They didn't have distinct characteristics, but the uniformality was unconditional love that they were sending and giving. And I could see them floating very peacefully right in front of me. I myself had my own doubts. I've always been my own biggest skeptic. I just thought to myself at that time, a clear thought. Am I dreaming this? Am I making this up? This seems too real to be true. And these angels were right over my body in this reality. I learned something, that the other side could feel like a million miles away, but it's also overlaying this reality, as if you take a radio dial and change it a couple ticks above this reality. It's right here around us at all times. As I was looking at the angels, I was able to hear and see their beautiful sounds, which beyond any color descriptors that we have. It's as if the color had a personality. It's as if the sounds that I was hearing was beyond any particular sound that I've ever heard. It was beyond beautiful and perfect. It's beyond words. Moments later, I was able to be posed a question from the angels and my guides in the spirit realm, which is, what will I do? Will I stay and continue my life on the other side and my work on the other side? Or would I stay on this side and continue to finish my journey in this chapter of my life as Jacob? I posed a question as to what would this life be like? The same questions that I had when I was crossing over. I wanted to know what was the rest of my story? What was about? What was I here to do? Moments later, I was able to see what's called a life review. But this life review didn't just encompass this lifetime. No, it went further than this lifetime. It went to previous lifetimes that I lived. And the closest lifetime that was connected to this lifetime was a lifetime in which I chose in my own life. I completed that. I don't say commit, I say complete it was a choice. It wasn't a crime. Moments later, I became aware of that lifetime and how I felt trapped in that lifetime. There was no way out. And moments later, I became aware of all the people that I was involved with as a teacher in that lifetime and the love that I shared with them. And moments later, I became aware of why I had a near-death experience and how close to that near-death experience it was to my own past life in which I took my own life. I say take my own body, but you can never take a life because we're all eternal. And when I was having my near-death experience, experience. I was suffering. I felt there was nothing to hold on to, nothing to move forward with. I felt trapped in endless suffering. But through the power of surrender and a trust and in an infinite intelligence far greater than my own, I was able to let go to the breath of eternity when my own breath was taken. I was able to let go of suffering and a trust in a greater channel that allowed my perseverance through this near-death experience. And moments later, I became aware of different people that I was speaking to through groups, different lectures that I would be doing in this life. And I thought to myself, a feeling of amazement with how beautiful the other side truly is. But as beautiful as it is, creating an awareness of heaven on earth might even be more profound. In this moment, I was able to connect to the eyes of participants that I would be speaking to in the work that I would be doing. And I said, as beautiful as the other side is, I 
cannot say no to this window. I cannot say no to bring the hereafter, to the here now in this life, to other people, to allow them to re-remember who they really are. And with that thought, with that choice, everything slowly dissipated. My guides, my angels, they never left me, but they were out of my immediate awareness during this time as I was coming back into the body. And then slowly, I became aware of a question that I had. How do I know all this will be real? How do I know all this will come true? How can I trust in that this will be worth it to turn down the other side, to turn down heaven? And with that, my guides gave me a powerful message. The power of the lives that we have and how they are charted, but how significant it is to go on the higher road, to trust our thoughts, to trust the spirit realm. We're able to trust, we're able to go through with grace and ease in our life. Moments later, I woke up in a hospital bed after being rushed by an ambulance to the hospital, and I knew that my life was forever changed. Weeks went by, and I noticed that my brain was much different. As I said before, once my brain snapped in half, deprivation of oxygen was when the spirit realm opened up. And, you know, a couple weeks later, I just was a lot more keenly tuned into the other side. And looking back in it, I know that the brain is not a producer of our life, but a filter between the two worlds. And moments of this early childhood was very complicated, but I was very connected to the spirit realm. I was able to have interdimensional communications with loved ones. I had my own connection to source and own conversations with spirit, with God as we call it, with my own guides and angels. But I was more comfortable in that realm than this realm, like many other near-death experiencers had. And then one moment when I was trying to continuously revisit, I was just given a message that I was meant to live my life in this body, in this life. I still use all of that stuff, but really I was meant to be here and grounded living a spiritual being as during this human experience. So looking back on it, I'm sure you're perplexed with profound questions. Starting with, you were three years old. How do you remember this? It's a profound question that I'm asked each and every day. I myself am my own biggest skeptic. My answer to that is how could I ever forget the profound love and warmth and healing on the other side. But from the ground up, trauma was my friend and my gift as to why I was able to, I believe, hold on to this memory. To some people, when they have trauma, they could completely forget the experience, or we could remember it very clearly. I hope some of the material today assisted your journey, guided your journey, and just remember, that it's okay to let go. I know that's the reason why I'm here today, as when I lost all of my breath in my body, I was able to surrender to the breath of eternity that we all have within us, the divine spark, and that propelled me to continue on. I remembered who I was. Despite the turbulence, we indeed go on. We are eternal. Bless you. Thank you for tuning in. Remember who you are, and I hope this story will enrich your experiences and many other profound near-death experience encounters on this channel. We